Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today we're back on with the um, old Master System Mark 1 repair and I'm pleased to say I managed to find that scrap uh, Master System Mark 2 board I'm even more pleased to say that the actual um, video processor there is the same part number as on the uh, Mark 1 even better the RAM actually is exactly the same uh, so is uh, this IC and obviously the processor the only thing that seems to be different is uh, the video um, and audio output IC which is um, on this is this tiny little uh, surface mount package there is where obviously it's um, a dip package um, on the Mark 1. I've seen um, Mark 1's with, um, sorry I've seen Mark 2's with the same um, dip, larger dip package um, IC in it as uh, this Mark 1. My modified um, Master System Mark 2, the one that's got um, composite out and the speed switch and everything on it. That has the larger um, IC, the same as a Mark 1 in it. This is a 92 board, uh, 18th of November 1992, so this one's getting right to the end of the um, Master System's production run. Uh, so possibly, uh, obviously why it uses the smaller surface mount IC there. But everything else on it seems to be exactly the same as on a uh, Mark 1. I'm mean, even wondering whether the ROM, um, we could even try this ROM um, in the Mark 1 board if we put a socket in there. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get this board to work. Um, it might be curtains for the board, it might be curtains for all the parts on this board. But yeah, I did try it before and um, I powered it up and I'll show you what I was getting. Well, yeah, I'll show you what I'm um, getting. Like I said, I've got it connected up at the moment. And. Uh, Basically, I don't know if you can see that we've got a few like wavy, squiggly lines on the screen, and um, that's it. Obviously, you can hear the the audio thud, and then that's pretty much it. The other thing was the modulator was missing on it. I think, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was the one that got had been trudging on, and I think the modulator was absolutely smashed. And um, all I've done is I've just connected ground and uh, video and audio signal up to where the modulator used to be, just to see if I could get something on the screen. Uh, but no, uh, unfortunately not. So I did have a quick um, probe around and I found that the original uh, 7809 there, sorry, um, 7805, sorry, I don't like it called 7809, 7805 uh, voltage reg was giving out nearly 7 volts. So it's chance that the um, 5 volt, obviously it should give out 5 volts this thing, it's chance that that has actually uh, destroyed the board. It could have destroyed every IC on this board. Uh, what we need is that IC there. It could be okay. It could be dead. It could have damaged that on the board. That's why we're not getting the video. It could have damaged the RAM, the processor. We really don't know. And as I've no real interest in repairing this board right about now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just extract the uh, video pro because we know that the Mark One board actually does work. It's just got a video glitch. We'll pull the uh, video processor off this board and we'll try it on the Mark 1 board. If we get a complete black screen, well we know that that was what the fault, or at least one of the faults on this was. If it works, well hey, we've fixed the fault. If it's exactly the same, then we've got somewhere, a fault somewhere else in the um, circuit and then um, we'd have to start doing a bit of head scratching. But uh, yeah, so that's what um, I think we're we'll do so far. So um, I won't, um, won't you make you sit through me extracting uh, this off here. I may make you sit through ex um, swapping it over and taking the other one off that board. So uh, join me back in a moment when I've got this um, off this board. Okay, we're back, and as you can see, I've um, I've removed the um, VDP from the from the donor board. And yeah, if you can look here, you'll see where it's come off there. We have a look on that side. Well, no damage to the um, donor board so if we do want to reuse this for something I may actually stick the um, if it doesn't indeed um, prove to be the problem um, I may stick the um, VDP I've taken it ta I'm going to take off the um, Mark 1 board on here and then try and find out what else is wrong because it does basically work it just has that one glitch on it so it'd be okay as a test um, chip <coughs> excuse me and I actually removed that using um, hot air. Now you see a lot of people and Gadget UK has actually just done a video where he um, showed a board where someone had obviously used a paint stripping gun to pull a chip off. Now if all you're doing is just salving chips and you don't care about the board, 
like he said, you, you do technically risk damaging the chip because you don't know how much heat you're putting into it doing that. But you can pull the chips off and, yeah, you're not going to damage the legs, uh, the pins on the um, chip. But you will, um, there's a very good chance you'll overheat the board and you'll actually damage the board. Um, I don't do that. I actually use, I mean, it's only um, a cheap and nasty one, but I use uh, one of these things here um, because it's temperature controlled. And with that, I can um, remove one of them ICs. I'm not going to pull any pads off. I'm not going to damage the pins on the IC. And as you can see, there is no heat damage to the board. If you looked on that board, if you've seen Gadget's uh, video, it's on um, a NES that he's working on. The guy sends him a spare board that's already extracted a few chips off. And you can see around here, it's all like basically swelled up and bulged where it's made the... Um, made the PCB material start to delaminate and that is purely because they've just basically blasted the whole area there with heat until it's got hot enough to melt the solder and actually pulled the IC off. I slowly and gently I preheat the board using the, the um, hot air and then I um, basically keep the air moving round until I've um, softened the IC up and I can just pull the IC out without doing any damage. In fact, um, that is the technique I'm now going to use to, uh, I've got cables stuck everywhere, um, that is the technique I'm actually going to use now to remove the um, offending IC on here. Now if I knew for certain that the IC was bad, I'd just take my, um, I'd take my snips like this, I'd cut the chip off like that, all the way over, and then I'd deal with the pins. We don't know whether that's the fault. So I don't want to go cutting off what could still be an okay chip to replace it with a chip that we honestly don't know whether it works or not. So um, I'm basically going to use the te same technique. I'm going to use heat and bring take this IC out. I'm then going to um, use pin header again. And I'm going to uh, make a socket up because it will work with this. Uh, like you saw me do on that um, Sega Mega Drive for the RAM. Because it's the same staggered pin configuration. It's just these are even harder with them being um, two rows of them. It is difficult to get them in doing it this way. But then I don't risk um, damaging any pads on the actual board. And like I said, if we can take the chip out and put a new chip in. It just it is a little more tricky to do than with these standard um, dual inline packages because of the staggered pins. You have to be very careful. You have to use a tool to basically push the pins home and make sure that they fit but it does line up pin spacing wise like wise fine with the um little ju the little um pin header there so let's get on uh, with doing that and what i've got i've got my um chip extractors here and all i've done is i've stuck a elastic band around them so basically they're sprung loaded i can put them on an ic and they grip onto the ic like that the reason i do that is because basically what i'm going to do We'll get a couple of um, cardboard boxes in here so you can see what I'm going to do. I'll have to put you up on the, uh, as far as I can, I'll put you up on the, and I'll switch the um, hot air on. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the, suspend the board. Like I said, you'll have seen this before if you watch my um, Mega Drive repair. And gravity is going to do a lot of the work here. Let me just uh, bring you up like that so you can see. Honestly, gravity is going to do a lot of the work. All we're going to do is apply a very, very, very gentle down pressure just using the um, chip extractors. <coughs> and all the main amount of the work is going to be done by applying the heat around here, like I said. And we'll melt the solder that way. If we keep it flowing and we don't go too um, quick and we don't hold it in one place, we're not going to damage the board at all. We'll just slip, we'll just nicely slip the um, IC out. Then obviously we'll have to deal with the um, solder that's left in the holes, but that's not a major issue. That's just a bit of sucking with the old um, solder sucker, which reminds me. Actually, I've not switched the soldering iron on yet, so I'll switch the soldering iron on, and that can be warming up while we um, use the hot air just to take this IC out. We'll just let that get up to temperature. There, we're about right there now. So all we want to do, we'll start quite high, and we just literally we're warming the board up. 
you can use proper preheating plates and things but I don't have one I find this technique works quite well all we're doing by heating the round the board like this is we're reducing thermal shock on the board all right we'll go in and we'll start heating the pins that we're interested in try and keep the heat away from obviously soldering pins that you don't want to um, you don't want to loosen should be start to go very soon now I'm just applying the tiniest tiniest little bit of pressure by just pulling down on the chip extractors and I really really wish I hadn't been uh, putting a new differential in the Land Rover earlier today because <laughs> holding the heat gun like this is killing my shoulder start going now. I can feel it just starting. There we go. Just needs a little bit of... There we go. And it's out. cool down and we'll just uh, flip the board, oops it's not quite out, oops and we drop the board no we're not quite out my uh, chip extractor slipped off it we spoke too soon, oh that's hot as well so we will have to go in for a, uh, a second round let's get it set back up We can go in for round number two. Now it is very close, which doesn't take much. Yeah, this is killing my shoulder. I will put an update on the Land Rover progress up in the next, probably the next few days or the next week. I have been doing quite a lot of progress, but you can't really see much of the progress because it's been putting thing, pulling things apart and putting them back together. Come on. There we go, I can feel it just starting. That's one side out. There we go, and there it is out. We have pulled a pin there, but we've not damaged it, we've just strained it a little bit. Let's put that to one side, and let's see if we've done any damage to the board. If we look at the board there, 
there's no heat damage to the board there's no pull pads on that side if we look on that side again there's a little bit of discoloration there but I think that's just old flux that's got very hot but we've not pulled a single pad off and all we need to do now is just go around and um, clean these holes up and oh, let's get them out of the way there's the uh, there's the IC that we've removed. There's a little bit of um, excess solder on there that we'll have to get off. But we haven't lifted any pads, we've not pulled any pads away or anything like that. All we need to do is straighten that one pin there which has got pulled straight when we uh, pulled it out. I'm wondering if it had been folded... ouch, that's hot. I wonder if it had been folded over a little bit. Because I did find on um, that one when I pulled it out there was two of the pins were actually folded flat on the board and I had to heat them up and pull them straight before I could actually um, get it out the board so anyway hopefully the um, soldering iron will have heated up by now so oops that's the wrong way so what we can do let's just get you uh, get you back down on the board all we need to do now basically is clear the solder away um, from these from these pins and we may have to actually just add a tiny little bit of fresh solder before we can get these out nice and clean. So let's go in and do that. Let's try them first few, see how easily these are going to um, suck free. I think these are going to be quite nice and easy because that comes straight out. See, if you've no leg in the hole, they actually do um, clean up nice and quick and easy. It's when you've got a leg in there causing you uh, problems and they don't come out anywhere near as easy. In fact, I'm doing the ones I haven't added solder to yet, and these are cleaning up nice and easy as well. Well, we'll go over them and uh, clean them up with a bit of solder braid and what have you after. Anyway, I'll um, I'll just pause you while I get all this solder out of here, and then, then I will be right back. Okay, we're back, and as you can see, I've um, I've cleaned that up nicely. I've just given that side a quick clean with some PCB cleaner and a um, cotton bud. Literally, I just give it a really quick, just um, a quick wipe over like that, where. Um, with some old flux which had um, turned brown. I got most of it off and you can see on the back here I've given this a good, I'll just give that another quick um, going over while I'm here. But literally, oh, just a quick going over with um, a cotton bud. Just like that. So a little bit of um, muck's come off but not very much. So that is ready to um, ready to accept the new IC, or rather, what I've done. If you just look here, I've cut um, four pieces of the pin header to the right um, size. We'll do one side, and then we'll um, do the other side. I think I don't think we're fine doing them all four at once. So if we put these in the holes, like I said, you saw me do exactly the same thing on that uh, Mega Drive repair. the ZIF RAM on the, uh, we've got a hole there that's not quite sucked out, if it is it's the only one, yeah, that doesn't seem to be going in there, let's give that uh, end hole, yeah it's just a little bit blocked still, oh we've missed that one,
Come on, you bugger. Nail it. Yeah, it's this one on this ground plane here that's just being a little bit um just being a little bit of a pain. I did miss one. Now which where has it gone now? Tell which one it is now. It's that one there. Give it a nice long heat. No, it's still not coming out that one, little bugger. It's had a little bit of fresh solder to it. So that's often all you need to do. Plenty of heat. Ooh, nearly. This one's being a bugger. So it's purely because it's on that uh, ground plane. There we go, that's free. That's open, I think. Oh no. Oh, you really are being a bugger, you. Is that not it? Nope. Bear with me a second folks, I'll be back as soon as I've uh, cleared this hole. Okay, well I finally cleared it, that was a right bugger to get out. So let's get back to what we was doing, which was um, installing this pin header. So in it goes. It's still tight, that, oh, it's gone in though. It was really tight, that uh, pin on that side though. Let's put the next row in. Hopefully they will hold themselves in while we just... Uh, get a quick dab of solder on the middle pins just to hold them. Let's just get you onto where I'm working here. There we go. Oops. There we are. You can see just about centre of picture there. And we'll just solder one pin in the middle just to just to hold them in position. that one up, I think that one. That's it. Just make sure that's not dropped down while we've been moving it. That's okay. I can go in and just solder one. There we go, that'll hold them in position. We can just check that on the other side, make sure that they're sitting pretty, which they are. And we'll do the same for this side, and then we can go in and solder them all properly. Oh, we've got another, another pin that's being a pain. That's definitely through that one, let's just try giving it a little bit of heat. There we go, that's through. That one's a bit loose actually. Let's just see if we can uh, let's see if we can just solder it well in situ, just to, basically just getting a tack solder on it so it doesn't come out of place. Hopefully 
because that'll hold it. Nope. That's got it. That's holding that in place while we get some uh, some proper solder on. So if we just go in now, solder that end, solder that end, solder there. Okay. Then we can just go around like we would normally and solder the pins in place. That's that side done. Let's move on to this side. We're nearly there. Finally this lot. I'll just turn the board around make life a little bit easier for me. Two more to go. There we go, that's all them soldered. So we'll just give the board a little bit of a clean up uh, round where we've worked here. We're getting with a bit of the old uh, flux cleaner. Give the board a bit of a brush. But it's not just for getting rid of the flux as well, it gets rid of any little stray bits of solder which have got um, on and could be shorting pins out. But it's always good just to give it a good clean when you've. Uh, when you've finished on the board, so you can see there. That's the. Uh, oops. There we go. That's uh, the work done. We look on the other side. There's our uh, pin headers installed. So let's get the IC, and that's the one I've got here. This is off the. Uh, oops. That one there. This is off the uh, Master System Two board. And let's try and install this in that socket and then we'll give it a run and see whether it actually works. Now, so this is quite tricky because you've got, it's like trying to put two rows of pins in at once. Try and concentrate on getting the middle pins lined up and then uh, worry about getting the outer pins in after that. And it's better to get one side lined up perfectly, like I said, then you can just play getting the other pins in.
that side's gone in quite easily. It's just this uh, second side's going to be a bit fun to get them all in. To be honest, it's not much uh, worse when you're actually putting these things back just straight onto a PCB. So. Uh, they're not the most fun of ICs to work on. I can spot one in there that's moved out slightly. Let's get in and just give that one a little push inwards. I don't think these were ever really intended to go in a socket. But let's just pull that off and have a look what's going on. There's one pin there that's slightly out of alignment. The rest don't look bad at all. A few there that are slightly out. It is really just a case of doing it all by eye with these. one that's not quite going in and it'll uh, throw the rest out. In fact just bear with me and I'll be back as soon as I've got this uh, back in so you don't just keep seeing the back of my head. Okay I'm back and uh, that was a bloody nightmare. That's probably taken me the best part of an hour to get that in. Um, I managed to get that side in, no problem at all. That side was fairly easy to... I'll just push these down. Uh, that side there was fairly easy, it actually lined up um, no problem and it went in. Then trying to get the other side in, um, you get half the pins in and then half of them would snip out and as you're trying to like, manipulate it, you get them all in but one. You go in with a pair of um, tweezers like that just to realign that one pin and you'd have to lift the chip ever so slightly just to be able to get that one pin into position and about four other pins would pop out of position and I was chasing it around like that for ages and in the end I managed to get all the inside pins there in line so I just pushed it down and ended up with about six on the outside here which didn't line up and they actually come the wrong side and what I ended up doing was lifting each pin individually straightening it, lowering it into its hole and then pushing it down into its hole so Although, yeah, that is now socketed. It's not a technique I can really recommend. It is very, very fiddly. And like I said, we don't even know whether that works or not yet. So I think that's the next thing to do. Is actually test now. Test the uh, master system again. And see whether we've still got any um, graphical glitches or not. Or indeed whether we actually get a screen or we just get the black screen that we're getting on the... Um, Mark II that we harvested this IC out, which at least will prove that that's uh, most likely what was at fault with that uh, Mark II. Anyway, let's uh, get the TV on. We'll get this connected up. I'll have that switched off there, but we'll get this... Um, we can't run it for very long, unfortunately, because we've no heat sink on the um, 7805. So we'd kill the 8, uh, 7805 in pretty short order if we run it for too long. But we can uh, run it just at least long enough to prove our um, to prove our point. So I'll zoom you out and I'll get you on the screen, and we can have a quick look and see what it's um, doing now. I'll zoom you in a little bit. 
I'll connect the controller up just in the... Uh, well, if it does power up, obviously we're going to want to jump onto Hang On and see whether the graphical glitches are uh, still there or not. So uh, I'll plug a controller in as well. We'll uh, switch on. And let's see, this is a moment of truth, what's going to happen. Well, it's fired up, so... Uh, Obviously that um, IC seems to be okay. Let's uh, see whether we've still got the graphical glitches or not. I think we have. Right, curiouser and curiouser. Because we are still exactly the same. we can see we've still got exactly the same graphical issues there interesting so I'm going to have to think a bit more about this oops let's get you back down there so we've changed the video RAM We've changed um, basically uh, the video processor there. That's what takes the um, information from the CPU, the ROM, and I believe this IC here. And um, creates the actual um, process of the video, does all the video processing, and then sends it onto this um, Sony IC there. So we've got the options we've got. Uh, I don't think it's the ROM, part, mainly because it does exactly the same when you plug a cartridge in. Um, and yeah, I don't think a ROM would give them kind of issues. It could be the Sega part here. I think that does have something to do with um, the video. Um, it's I'm not a hundred percent with it because um, there are a lot of data lines that go straight to that from the uh, ROM. Let's have a quick look on the underneath. Let's see what we can um, see. Let's get the TV switched off. Yeah, we do have a number of um, lines that do appear to go straight from that to the um, VDC. So that could be the issue. That There's a possibility that that could be the issue. I don't think it's going to be that. Um, in my mind, it may be that, um, that I see there. Which, fortunately, again, we don't know whether it works, though. Is we do have the scrap, uh, we do have the spares board here. And it does have, I believe it's exactly the same part on it. Let's have a quick see. That's the Sega 513-5237. And that's a 5... Sorry, um... Yeah, 315-5237. So that is exactly the same part as it is on um, this board. So I think in the next video we will be um, possibly looking at swapping um, that out. That part there, um, obviously that board we can't use the part off it because that's the surface mount um, version of it. But I have a feeling that's the same part as using a Mega Drive. And I've got a couple of scrap Mega Drive boards, I think one of which has that um, type of IC on it. I'm not 100% sure it's the same, I will um, look into that. Because basically that and that are the only things that I haven't changed which are actual um, active components which I could think could possibly cause this problem. Um, so I think in the next video we'll be um, swapping that out and then possibly um, that out. But I was really thinking it was going to be in this area here so it proves that um, you know what initially you see on screen doesn't necessarily mean what you're going to find. Uh, like I said I was pretty sure it was going to be that that was going to be the issue. Or the um, the video ramble. Actually, we proved that out in the uh, first video, and we um, we've now proved uh, that is not the issue. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, like I said, in the next video, we will um, go swapping that out, and possibly the um, that video I see there. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, that's going to um, cure it. So. Uh, at least one thing, at least it wasn't a quick, simple, easy fix. It is something a little bit more um, involved in head scratching. Uh, 
So okay, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed that little update on this project. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.